Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, welcome back to another edition of our Women's History Month series, hashtag choose to challenge with our special guest, Penny Hayes. Penny, how's it going? It's going very well, thank you. Excuse my raspy voice, it's post-COVID. Well, I'm glad that you are post-COVID. <laughs> That's Bless right, me. so am I. <laughs> well, Penny, we're going to get into just a conversation about this Women's History Month celebration that we're in. But before we start, I'd like you just to tell our listening audience a little bit about who is Penny Haynes. Penny Haynes is one of those people who is always choosing to challenge and continuing to move forward. Uh, I'm very blessed in the fact that I have an aptitude for programming. So if I think of something that a tool that's not been created yet or a software that hasn't, that I have the ability to make that happen. And so that has turned out to be in my benefit. I started out with podcasting back in 2004 when it first came out. I just oh. hit the wave and I started hosting uh, international podcasting expos. And uh, then after that, I started creating podcast directory software and then community magazine software, which is kind of like blog and internet radio so or ra- internet TV. So I was just always... And ahead of the curve, so to speak. And people were like, what are you doing? I don't understand. What's a blog? What's a podcast? What's an RSS feed? Uh, So, but God's using it and putting it all together in my life. And that is culminating in joint conferences and free online conferences. And that is where people can come if they want to speak in conferences all year long and cross promote with other people, then, then we're the place to be. That's, that's great. I I love that you're on the, You've seen yourself, you know, when you look back on the cutting edge. And I always tell um, women, you want to position yourself where you are trying to be in front of that wave or at least riding the cr- the crest. But you don't want to be overtaken by the wave of change, right? Uh, yeah. And you also don't want to be too early. Mom, I'm, I'm on an average three years ahead of the curve. So I'm hoping I hit it just right this year. Good, good. Well, congratulations on all the things that you're doing with joint conferencing. And I'm excited that I'll be a part of it this year. Yes, yes, yes. So tell us with with celebrating women, why is that for you personally so important for us to celebrate women's history, but also lift up each other as women? Well, one of the things is I was looking over how the uh, women's voting came to be. You know, someone tried doing it back in the 1700s. <laughs> then it was the 1800s and things just kept changing back and forth. But one of the things that really strikes me that I think is applicable now is it took formally 80 years, 80 years for women to get the right to vote. And, you know, In this world, we have a God-given right to express the truths that we believe and to to share them. And also it it helps other people evolve as as we share our trials and our struggles and our victories and the lessons we've learned. So to me, the entire voting, you know, voting movement for women says that not only are we equal, but we have something very, very different to offer very different than what uh, the men do offer, not necessarily better, not necessarily worse. But, you know, God created Adam and Eve and they were meant to be together. They both offered different things. And and that's what it means to me, a freedom of expression and also filling in the gaps. Men don't have to be everything and women don't have to be everything. We work together. Yes, I, I, I love that, um, that description that we collectively, right, we can do so much more and there's strength in the feminine and the masculine, right? Absolutely. But, but you just said it took 80 years to get the vote. Yep. But then, you know, that was, that was the 1920s. But then you think about the other groups, ethnic groups, where it took so much longer. Absolutely, because blacks were not included. Black women were not included in uh, in the very beginning. So, you know, it, it's just always like I was talking about being ahead of the curve. There were some people that were way ahead of the curve. Like I said, even in the 1700s, there was this one woman who was allowed to vote. 
And then a woman could vote, let's say, if uh, if her husband had passed away and she had rights. And then I also read that there were some women that were able to vote because their fathers were rich and didn't want their husbands to get a hold of their money through their daughters. So, you know, it's just to me, uh, everybody uh, does not get equal say and equal time until somebody stands up for them. And unfortunately, most of the time, nobody stands up for somebody unless there's something in it for them, like those rich fathers who were trying to protect their money. Yeah, that, and that is unfortunate. But the one part of the story that, you know, most people don't realize is even though Asian women or black women or Native American women did not receive the right to vote for until years later, they were part of that engine fueling, you know, the, the whole suffrage movement. Mm hmm. Yes. And, you know, I also thought about the different groups. You know, there were two original groups and and then there was um, another group that joined. That was uh, it was the Christian Women's Temperance League. And that really brought it together and pushed it over the edge. But, you know, I also wonder how hard it was for those women to work together. I mean, you would think everybody wants to work together, but everybody's got their own ideas of how it is. I mean, if any of us have ever sat down at a dinner table with family members, you know, we all love each other, but we've got very different ideas of things. And so I, it just crossed my mind. And I wondered, you know, what were the differences uh, that had to be set aside for these two original groups to come together and work together? And uh, and yet that was probably also a part of this larger group, them benefiting from this larger group coming in and joining them together. So working together is the real big thing if we're going to have any kind of change. And then people have to be able to set aside their differences. Everybody's not going to get everything they want if they want to work with everybody else. Compromise is the name of the game, not compromise of your values. But, you know, there are some things we have to set aside and say, hey, I may not be able to see what that person is saying, or I may not understand yet or see the impact of it. But I'm I'm going to be able to release that. I'm going to be humble. I'm going to not be prideful and allow someone else to have their say because, you know, in the end, they may just be right. I, I, I love that. So let's that's a perfect um, segue into choose to challenge. So today, everyone's saying it's time for women. It's it's our time. What what does choose to challenge really mean in, in this environment, and not only just domestically and in the U.S., but just globally? Well, choose to change. I, I struggle a little bit because we can choose to change, but we can't choose to change someone else. Someone else, we can take the steps. We can make ourselves better. We can do our best to change the world with what tools and resources we have within the geographic or now with online realm that we have. We can change people's ideas through, you know, these online um, online radio and TV and the, the conferences, everything else. But I also want to stress the fact that change has to start within ourselves. We have to challenge ourselves to change because it's very frustrating when you're trying to change other people, which is necessary sometimes, but it doesn't <laughs> happen immediately, right? I mean, 80 right. years 80 years to get women to be able to vote. So I think we need to first challenge ourselves, challenge ourselves to be the best version of ourselves and also challenge ourselves to be respectful of other people when those people don't yet understand what it is we're trying to share because everybody doesn't have the same viewpoint or perspective. They don't have the same, right. the same experiences so that they even understand it. So we need to be patient with people. We need to be respectful of those people who don't understand yet what we're trying to tell them and still love them because animosity towards someone who does not agree with you does not achieve anything. Respect, no. listening, honoring and taking time to explain, but still allowing, uh, saying to them, listen, this is what I see. This is what I think, but I'm going to respect your, uh, your right to also not believe this yet. So I'm just hoping that you will see it. So that's what I think. No. And I, I think, I think that was beautifully, beautifully stated that we, we often say, oh, I want to change the world. Right. But you, change first starts within. 
Yes. And and recognizing where we can improve as individuals, then we change that ripple effect, our sphere of influence. Then from there, you can see greater and greater impacts. But if you just step over you, step over your family, step over your community and say, now I want to be this world advocate. How do you how do you do that? Right. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And it's not as if I I really think that if if I've learned anything from all of the discussions over all of the different things that have happened in the past several years, you know, I see family members turning against themselves, uh, mother against daughter, father against child, because they don't have the same viewpoint. Uh, People cutting off friends, people calling other other people all these nasty names because they don't believe like they do. And. It's just a shame because the moment you attack someone else, they're going to shut their ears. And I'm I'm sure that the women um, in the suffragette movement had to learn this because you had to balance being able to share your viewpoint with while still being respectful. Because you're just going to turn somebody else away if you're going to attack them or or try and make them feel smaller. The idea is to expect the best from the person that you're talking to and that you're trying to influence. Accept the fact that if they're not hearing you or not understanding, there's a reason for it. And they also may not yet be ready for the change for whatever reason it is. Sometimes you're just planting a seed and somebody else is going to water it and somebody else is going to reap the harvest from that. Uh, That analogy, that's that's beautiful. I want to ask you with, with all the, with all the with all the change that's happening how can we communicate a message to our to the young generation that's coming up mm. to allow them to be more accepting of others but yet comfortable in their own voice you know not not afraid to express their truth while still allowing others to express theirs what would you say to to our young uh, young girls coming up behind us I think there's a couple of things. I'm also a counselor, pastoral counselor and a and a clinical trauma professional and a drug and alcohol counselor. So I deal with people's beliefs and their experiences a lot. And what a lot of people don't realize is some of the beliefs that we have are simply input into us by our caretakers. So one of the first things I would say is really stop and think about what you believe. I'd say write it down. I mean, literally write down the things that you believe in, but then challenge yourself and say, why? Where did I get that from? Is that from my parents? Is that from my friends? Is that from my school? Or is that from my church? And then decide, okay, I think I'd like to now look into this and see what the truth is behind this and make an informed decision for myself. So that's the first thing I think they should do. And the other thing is, is to also realize, because when you're young, you don't have the the wisdom that comes with experience and making mistakes and, and learning from your failures. But again, I think the big deal is, is understanding that other people are not always ready to see or understand what just seems so apparent to you. You have this aha moment and you're like, I just got to share this, you know, and, and I'm, I'm right and everyone else is wrong. And, and they don't realize that in the same way that five minutes ago, they didn't understand it and they didn't really get it, that the people that they're sharing it with may not get it yet. It's not a reason to give up, but it is a reason to make sure, again, you keep the conversation respectful and honor the people and and let them know, I'm not trying to take away your choice or your reasoning or your opinion. I'm just sharing mine. And I'm hoping that as I respect you, you will respect me and hear me out. I, I love that. I when you were given the example, when you have that epiphany, I, I remember, you know, being that young teenager and suddenly it's like, I knew everything because I had this aha moment. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Yes. So I, I now want to turn this over and give you um, some time to talk about and honor and celebrate um, the women who, woman or women who you've had a, a purse personal relationship with, who has influenced your life in the past and continues to still uh, have an impression on your life today. Absolutely. The first person 
actually, as I thought about it, the person who's had the most lasting effect on me was my mother's, uh, was my husband's grandmother. Uh, she was the, the, the mother of the church where she went, but very few people know what she had gone through. Um, she lost at eight months her, um, her, her baby girl uh, just to crib death. Um, and, uh, and on top of that, her husband was a, um, a philanderer, <laughs> uh, an alcoholic, lost all their money. Um, she also had to endure the fact that when her only son married that her daughter-in-law did not like her and so uh, chose to influence her son not to have anything to do with her, her even though they live next door. Um, she, she went through life and she had to deal with so much and yet this woman was so godly. She was so kind. She placed her faith in God and did not pressure people to meet her needs. Instead, she just put it in prayer. My husband, went, when she passed away, the only thing my husband wanted was her prayer book. And when we took that out and saw how long, how diligently, how faithful she'd been praying, not just for herself, but for others. And she'd go back and check off the ones that were, were actually answered. And that kind of faith, that kind of moving forward, that kind of positivity and hope, even though I know she struggled strongly with depression and being alone and, and being cut off from her son or alienated, all of these things didn't stop her from staying with what she believed and acting it out and sharing it with others. So I really believe she is the person who has had the most influence on me. Uh, she was humble. She was kind. Uh, even if she believed something was true, she didn't beat anyone else over the head. She'd share it and then let them decide about it or not. So she's um, she's my main person. And then I do have a friend who really has influenced me. She's she's had a horrific, horrific um, childhood with abuse from a very young age. And uh, and she struggled on and off with uh, mental illness. And, you know, now I, I see her getting her master's degree. I see her moving forward. She's got such a heart for people who hurt because of what she's been through. But she just loves people, she just loves people. So I guess the common denominator is not only that these are women who overcame horrible things that were done to them by other people that they had no control over. They decided their response would be to love. And that's what I admire the most is not to hate, but to love. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And, it, you know, we hear often, we, we want to share the, the good stories, right? But we don't hear the trials and the, and the tears that end up being that person's testimony, which enables us to celebrate where they are now. And, and I think it's so important that we, especially to our young, our young generation, that we share the journeys because they need to know how did they overcome? What, what, what inner strength, what divine strength gave them that, that courage to still pr to press through, to persevere. And as you said, to still love in spite of. Exactly. I, I had just seen a Facebook post. Um, there was a recent TV show where um, they mentioned it was one of those zillions of medical shows that they have. And they mentioned a very rare disease. Well, the next day on Facebook, you know, I, I'm not on there very often. So as God would have it, just this particular right there on my page is someone I've known since childhood. She was a younger sister of my best friend. And she said, I just want to share this with you. And she said that she had that. And, and, you know, from all the pictures on the outside of her life, you know, all the things with her kids, everything looks perfect. Married her child, her, her college sweetheart, four fabulous children, all doing well. And I just thought, gee, her life has been simple. But with that one post, she blew me away. She used to have to have shots in her eyes. You know, they did, didn't know if she would end up in a wheelchair, be able to have children. And yet she's been healed for about 20 years now. Um, and she just praised God for that. But you never really know what the person you're looking at has gone through to get to where they are. And whether they're having a good day or a bad day, you don't know what's happened to make them act the way that they do. So, again, to try and love and understand people without making them be the way you want them to be when you need them to be that way. And that's what I love about what you're doing with your joint conferencing. It's obviously providing information, resources, tools 
to the a greater community, but individuals are, are couching their stories in this as well. Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, you don't have to necessarily always be an expert in something from a from an intellectual or a a school version. You could live through it. And really the most powerful lessons that there can be are people who have actually walked through these things. Their businesses, their ministries are are from loss. Sometimes, you know, people who who share about grief or they share about money or they share about marriage because these are things that they've struggled with and they've overcome. So there is there is you never want to underestimate somebody's testimony of what they've gone through. And if somebody's watching this now and you're going through something, I want you to know, hold on, because if you will commit to just follow through and go through it, not around it. When you are done, you're going to have something of intense value to offer other people. You don't know who you're going to touch or who you're going to reach because of what you have endured yourself. Exactly. I love it. I love it. I can't believe we're almost out of time. So I want you to have um, pretty much the last word. And what would you like those that listen to this to to take away? to help them elevate to the best version of themselves, to be women of impact, women of change, um, and, you know, within their, sp- their sphere and beyond. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but respect, love, honor. It's very hard when other people are not that way. You just want to respond back to them in kind, but that does nothing. It damages the conversation. It damages you because you could be at your best all that time, you know, all the rest of the time. And then you give in to that urge to just get back or give somebody back what they just gave you. And it's just, unfortunately, it's going to look bad on you. So don't give in to it. Instead, keep the conversation open. Expect that others are not going to understand what it is you're sharing with them, but plant a seed, be kind, be respectful, be humble, and be yourself. That will be the way that you can be the best version of yourself. Don't ever sink to the lower depths that other people may may do when they don't agree with you. I love it. Penny, thank you so very much for joining us for Women's History Month. Hashtag choose to challenge. This has been such a privilege. Um, and I'm excited with some of the work that we'll be doing together in the upcoming year. Yeah. Uh, ladies, if you want to get in touch with Penny, Penny, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, they can reach me um, at jointconferences.com. And uh, there's a contact us or info at jointconferences.com. And I hope I will get an opportunity not only to work with the rest of you, but I'm so looking forward to working with you personally this year. Thank you so much. And to our listening audience, as we always say within Celebrate You, love yourself, embrace yourself, and whatever you do, always, always celebrate you. Until next time, goodbye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.